Alright, so kid Ziggy and Papa Luke, man. Thanks What's good? Sitting down with this all verbatim, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, for sure. Shout out, shout out your, shout out what you got going on, bro. I mean, same area. We got to support. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. Everything here. So, yep. Big shout out to you, bro. Thank you for having us, bro. So first off, just give me a little background information on who you guys are, your music, uh, things of that nature. Shit, you want to start? Yeah, bro. I, I, uh, so I really started making music um, right when I was 16. Uh, I graduated here in Chatham High School, yeah. and I got into like, like choir and stuff like at 16 and I never like sang before like growing up or nothing like I never really like sang or you know did anything like that I just started singing randomly in the car once one of my friends was like bro you're you're cold bro you should you know what I mean like you should come try out do these things and so I ended up starting that and right from there like that's just like you know what everybody else does all that booty ass garage band dusty ass yeah. what's that uh audacity Can got into somewhere. those like dirty ass uh you know old fucking systems and and program so started getting into that shit and then that's it just kind of snowballed effect from there you know what i mean like that's where like music really started like i really got when i started getting like you know what i mean like making my best music is like when i met ziggy like me and ziggy really like you know what i'm saying splash right right from the get-go our first song was a smash it's called ricky bobby it's actually our most viewed song on spotify so like that shit was that shit's a smash that's it it's crazy it's like one of the first songs we ever recorded but Sure that's enough. that's really for me, you know what I'm saying? That's really for me. Yeah, and shit, for me, I uh, I picked up a guitar when I was about 12. Um, my mom bought it for me up at the local pawn shop. And my best but my best friend was playing guitar, and he was he was shredded. So I just I wanted to be just like him, and uh, moved to uh, Rochester is where I graduated. I moved there when I was about 13. I hated rap music with a passion. I absolutely <laughs> hated it, and then. Uh, my buddies just were totally in love with it though. They really got me into Wayne and shit and then kind of started trying to rap when I was 15. It was not pretty. Um, but still, you know, the guitar has always been a big passion for me. Um, made music all throughout high school and got on the radio and shit. And then whenever college hit, uh, after my first year, I met this this crazy ugly boy and yeah, we started making yeah, music. Bro. And like he said, man, right off the get-go, it was a smash. Snowball, bam! Yo. Big <laughs> it's, smash! It's almost every time too, man. I swear when I'm in there with him, it, we don't miss. We haven't missed in a while. What do you, like, what do you think has made you guys like click like right off the bat with your, your your music? I think it's like I think it's like like a perfect balance of like differences and like similarities. Like yeah. like life been going through like certain things in life, but also like as artists, like we were we're mu like when we met, we were much different artists. Like right. I was set dead ass set on just singing, bro. Like I you would not have caught me. You know what I'm saying? I would have never rapped, you know, uh, yeah. and I still, to this day, say I don't really rap, you know what I mean? It's so melodic what I do, it's not like, yeah. it's not like I'm straight up like rapping like bars, like G Herbo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like that's, to me is like, that's like real rap, but that's Chicago rap, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I ain't a rapper like that, but, yeah. and it just kind of coincided because Ziggy's a singer too, and mm -hmm. he was, when I met him, he was rapping though, he was like rapping, yeah. he wasn't really singing, he like, I did, low key, I had no clue he could sing. And then he started right. singing, like telling me how he can do all this, and it just kind of elevated, like everything just elevated. Like, yeah, man, crazy. I'm, I'm self-conscious with the singing, you know what I mean? I was in Madrigals and did a lot of solo shit. Did, uh, it was like yeah. the lead in the musical and shit. So I, I can definitely sing, but it's just something I'm like, I don't know, just kind of coming around to recently. But we're definitely not any rappers, man. We just know how to rap. Yeah, so. yeah. I feel like I feel like rapping just like kind of came along with it, like, like yeah. just like what I listen to, like I'm. I was I'm just huge. I was always huge into like Lil Wayne and like, like, like you know when Drake first started and shit like that. You know, and the, you listen to him, it's like this ain't really like rap, rap. You know, like Lil Wayne's got songs that he's singing on that. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like shit like that, and like and like you got Drake was rapping really when he came out, but he was still melodic with his tone. Like yeah. his tone was always was melodic. You know, you could tell like this is this ain't like this ain't like the rap that you heard when you had Tupac and you had Biggie, you you had the the rappers that really started the generational wave. Yeah, you and got just, rappers and singers, but nowadays and look at it now. Well look at the now. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I mean, it is full of a bunch of corny, you know what I'm saying, artists and stuff like that. But but there's so much rap that's like not really rap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh like, yeah. It's like not really rap. Like Lil Pump, he's rap. He's like technically rap, but you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a different style of rap. It's yeah. that, that's just that's just crazy. Yeah. So when we uh, hear your music, what do you think is most different and unique about your sound? 
change up a flow. It's like our, like our songs are so diverse, bro. Yeah, I think it, you know, and it kind of goes back to what we said before, man. Like, I'll be damned if I were just a rapper or if I just listen to rap music. And I try to, like, you know, we try to find a really good balance of hip-hop but also R&B, man. Like, because, like, at the end of the day, we are singers at heart. So, and I mean, and there's definitely some, like, great local talent when it comes to singing and rapping. But, like, I think kind of what separates us is, man, our product. We're also, like, you know, producers and engineers. So, we, you know, we do all the work ourselves. And we got, we got producers, too, man. But we, at the end of the day, man, like, it's all self-engineered and we can kind of make the sound our own craft. oh yeah shout out to broken beats too oh yeah shout out yeah, broken he, out in paris he's, man. he's he's from paris france he's he's our producer bro and d boss he's from texas yep but but like uh also what i think too is i encourage anybody to go through you got in smoke that's our new album i encourage anybody to go through it. it's uh, first of all it's up everywhere but like i encourage you to go through it and listen to the first song to the last Bro, you're mm -hmm. gonna go through so much different type of music. Like you're not gonna hear the same sound over yeah. and over. Like our first song's damn near a pop song. Yeah, it's pop. You know what I'm saying? It's and then pop, our second's bro. just straight R and B, and then third R and B. Then Fourth, we dive into rap. hip hop. Yeah. Bang! We just smack. We go smack. Totally change up. Totally yep. change up. Go and it's a lot of hip hop in the middle, but it's mixed with R and B. And once you get to the end, man, he's got a killer R and B solo song, and I got a killer <laughs> yeah, alternative right. rock song. Realistically, yeah. I, and I'll stick it in my right. roots with the guitar. But yeah, bro. Yeah, buddy, buddy, self engineered, did everything. I mean, the guitar, the bass, everything for a song called Noseblind. He did everything yeah. for that song. Like that song is probably one of our only songs. You know, that's just like, dang, that like that's it. It's separate. It's not. It's no, there's nothing else on the album that sounds like that. Yeah. For sure. And I think that is what separate the sound yeah. itself, yeah. Just being multiple genre artists. Because yeah. I got a song called Fuck Feelings on there. That's my solo song. But like, that's still like, it's still like R&B though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this, it's like, it's like the first couple songs on the album. It's still like R&B sounding, but it's yeah. a lot of passion, a lot, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's just like emotional shit. Okay. Uh, what up and coming music are you guys working on right now? Oh man, a lot. We got a lot of shit with like, man. You can shout out a lot of people right now. You know, shout Jimmy. out Elijah. Elijah settles. He's oh. shooting our video for Wrong Places. That's our big song that we're actually gonna uh, shout out. High school. We're gonna be uh, promoting it here, doing everything here. You know what I'm saying? And we're actually taking it down to like Nashville. We're gonna be doing a video down there. So yeah, shout man. out Elijah settles photography. Yeah, yeah. he's a we're, he's a monster, man. Monster, we're, monster. we're also working with uh, Gabe from DGD. And uh, RJC, Bonnie, yeah, Bonnie, Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah. Shout out the whole DGD squad. Oh yeah, yeah shout out, stuff, man. Shout out RJC. Yeah, I mean we got a lot. We got a lot with them. So, also a lot with Junior. You know, obviously, yeah, obviously man. Junior. We work with Junior. You Always. know, we kind of we kind of have our own little collab project that is almost done. Yeah. But we've been working on multiple collab projects. I guess we're just kind of feel how we go, and we're probably gonna drop like what probably about four singles probably first. Mm -hmm. Just drop singles and, and then, then hella projects to end and the then year. just in the year with some projects, you know, rounding up to like 2019, 2020, you know what I mean? Drop some, drop some projects. Yeah, yeah bro. As far as this journey with music, um, what would you say is the biggest challenge you've faced so far? Being, man, me personally, being from a city where people don't really want to see you succeed necessarily, like, I mean, there are supportive people everywhere you go, but man, it seems like a lot of motherfuckers in this town just don't want to like use some teamwork and get, just get their shit together and like get it done together, you know what I'm saying? So I think the biggest part of it is trying to find open-minded people that will actually, you know, listen to it. Because once you hear it, you're going to like the music. I mean, that's just a fact, bro. Like, so it's just a matter yeah, of looking fun. past our image. I mean, he's ugly as hell. I'm ugly too. But I look like some dirty fucking hippie and a lot of people just be looking at me like, oh, nah. Just they just get a nah vibe from me immediately. But like, man, if you just... If you just give me a second and realize that we're genuine ass people, Ooh, we're just good sure. at making music, man. Yeah. Then we're not we're humble as hell about it, yeah. man. It's just yeah. trying to find open minded people. I would say. I'd I'd say yeah. I'd say that's probably one of the top things. You know, you here in Springfield, like, like what other artists around here wants to befriend any other artists? Like nobody does. Nobody wants to work with each other. Everybody wants to be that that person. Yeah, but I'm the hottest in the area. Uh, right? Hottest in the area, and I mean. I've met the hottest artists in the area. They're here. Yeah. And also, that includes myself. Shout out ISO. Yeah. It's just so, it's just, that's been the biggest thing. And just finding, like, people that genuinely want to, want to be, you know, watching you, not just a part of it. Like, I feel like everybody that I meet has to dick ride me, dick ride, dick ride, like, just. They want to be in that they, inner circle, man. They want to be, and, and I get that. Like, I, I totally get that shit. Like, there are some people that 
need that we need like if you want to be like something that's a part of what we're doing we've been doing this now together like as like kind of a duo for like the past two almost three years we've so like, a lot man. so like the people that are that are within our circle have come to us offering us you know something like here's where i can help you you know what i mean sure. you know what i'm saying like and it's like bet mm-hmm. you know that that presents yourself in a different way it's been fortunate that the people that have they've just been great people yeah. Good people to work with. I mean, whether if it's to do with like closing, shout out Alex for the shirt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like sell merch, but like, no matter what, you know, it it comes down to a fact that's like, like, I have multiple people, probably about like ten, fifteen people that never made music and have never supported my music, but now that they're seeing that we're starting to get like our notoriety out, you know what I'm saying? They come to me, they're like, Yo, bro, I just start a SoundCloud, bro. Just start a, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, face ass boy, like. Okay, I've been doing this for like three years, and you've never talked to me once. I see you once, and yeah. this is what you have to say to me. You know what I'm saying? It's that you know, and it's it's just fake. You know, what I mean, it's just fake love. There's so much fake love here. That's why it's like. I think, I think it's one thing for somebody to be wanting to be a part of a circle, but it's another thing for somebody to come to you and say, "Hey, you know what I mean? I want you to teach me what you know about music, but also this is what I have to offer to you. This right. is help that- you." Exactly. You know I mean? So right. you're you're giving something, but you also want something in return. Amen. You know I mean? Yeah, I ain't trying to be a dick either. When I, you yeah. know what I mean, like, you know what I mean, like, yeah. like, like, I'm not, I'm really not like, I can't be a whole asshole to people, but like, <laughs> but like, but that's a perfect example right there. You know, I don't, I don't want to shade nobody else or disrespect nobody's yeah, grind no. or whatever. But you know, you can't just, you can't just hop onto something that's. This ship has sailed, bruh. Yeah. Like we're we're off. We're off and gone. I mean, we we still. I say it all the time. We ain't shit. And I will say that when I'm famous, like famous, famous. I will say that. I'll still say I'm not shit because yeah, I'm. I want. I want to reach multiple things. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Bruh, I want to reach multiple things. So it just yeah. just comes down to it. Comes yeah. down to it. And also, people just ask me, hey, how can I help you? What, what right. Can I do? You know? That's like the business professional approach to it, man. Like, if you want a job somewhere. You're not just going to walk in there and be like, hey, give me a job. Like, right. you're going to be like, no, I'm going to wear my best outfit. I'm going to go in there and give them my resume, show them the experience I have and what I could bring to their company. And then I might get the job. There's no even guarantee. There's other people that want to do the same damn thing. So, like, why would you just, like, spam me with links and then get pissed when I don't give you the attention that you think you deserve? Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, be professional, man. Yeah, All right. For sure. As far as the, um, the rookie artists that are just starting off on SoundCloud or just – starting to record you know what advice do you do you have for them learn how to mix your own music learn how to mix your own music that's yeah. the biggest thing don't count on nobody to mix your shit bro yeah man like 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 bro like i i can genuinely say it bro i i hit the jackpot bro i mean ziggy's taught me just about everything on logic bro like yeah. You know, there's a few things I that you know. I mean, I've had to do myself for sure. But like, but like with it, like Ziggy helped me. You know, what I mean, he he propelled me. He already had his idea about it. I've just like learned a little bit more deeper things with like EQ and like compression. That's huge. Mm-hmm. But like a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't ever learn how to mix their self. They don't invest in themselves. That's what, that's what you got to do. That's yeah. investing in yourself. Being able to, you know, what I mean cut out, you know, whatever it is that your thing is, drinking, drugs, smoking, whatever. I mean, put that down for a few months so you can go buy something, you know, save your money, go buy, you know, whatever, a laptop, your system, buy your equipment, do it yourself, bruh. Yeah, you man. got in smoke was mostly recorded in a closet. We came in here and people were blown the fuck away that we're just using, you know what I mean, normal ass standard plugins and yeah. just yeah. normal shit. You we know? took the time. Yeah. I think when you start with the scraps and you start um, with what you have, it forces you to be creative. 100. Different different shit that nobody else is doing. But it might sound better than somebody else using top brand quality equipment. Right. Mm-hmm. You just work with the scraps. You you work with something yeah. that had, you know what I mean, Dr. Sure. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times it's just the time you put into it, man. Like, you don't want to overmix or do anything like that either. But back to the, the question you said with the whole, what would you give advice for people, like, just starting shit? I would just yeah. say, like, be, be open-minded to, like, open... Took uh, constructive criticism, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people will just Hell be yeah, mad. Bro. I remember I put out my first couple songs and I was like, man, like I just want people to <laughs> like it. And like, but if it's not if it's not meeting, you know, what people like, then it's not gonna happen. So I would just say, be open minded to constructive criticism and keep making music because the more you make, the more you're gonna grow as an artist. So you can't be yeah. putting out two songs and be like, why am I not popping? You know. 
Right, yeah. Or even at the same time, you know, you get somebody like like a good feature or whatever. You know, and it, even like, because I would consider like, like even us a good feature. People are going to listen to your music if you have us on there. And it's yeah. going to be from different areas too. It's not, you know, it's nothing out yeah. of that content. But like, you know what I mean? It's just even if you get a good feature, you know what I mean? Like that one thing is not going to take off your whole career. Like you have to, you have to invest your time into like, Really mm -hmm. diving deep and getting better at the things you're bad at, you know. True. Yeah. Being in this group together, um, how do you guys stay level-headed uh, and not getting too much ego? Like I'm better than you. Like how do you guys stay together in this group making music? I. He genuinely pushes me to be a better artist. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. At, at points, I'll be like, damn, he bodied me on that. Or, like, I'm sure he feels, you know, it, it goes back and forth. Yeah, but, like, forth. but at the same time, man, like, I tell him all the time, like, he's he's probably my favorite artist, man. And, like, I he, he inspires me to be a better artist, write better lyrics, work on my singing, you know. And so at the end of the day, like, we're, we're friends, but not just because of the music, you know what I mean? Like, music kind of brought us together, but at the same time, we're all, like... Man, if I if he popped off before me, that'd make me so happy, man. Like I'm not even in it for that for that kind of like I just want to see myself blow up and I'm gonna utilize whoever I need to to get there. Like, right. man, right. this this is my fucking brother, brother right brother. here. So like, yeah. if he if no he bodied crap, a song no. and that shit got it and it mine didn't, it's still a you know we're still gonna be in this shit together. So. Yeah, yeah. I th I think too. Um, that's the biggest thing is like hyping one another up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but like and but still being like, nah, just do that again. You know, if you record yeah. something or just be like. Yo, just do that shit again real quick. Or, you know and that goes mean? back to the constructive criticism too, man. I'll, I'll yeah. be sitting there thinking I had a bomb ass take and Luke's like, redo it. Yeah. And I'll be, for a, like a split yeah. second, I might be like, man, what the fuck? But then, <laughs> but then, I, but then I'm going right. to do it. Then yeah. when I do it, I'm like, man, he was right. Like he just coached me like in a way, you know what I'm saying? Right. So nah, that's open, constructive criticism is one of the most important things in this industry, bro. Definitely, yeah. And it just came down to it. I mean, we just, we just took, uh, you know, the strengths that we both have, we just... We just realized that your strength is this, mine's this. There's no higher or lower to it, you yeah. know. Like that shit's just that shit's equal, and we're gonna figure out the best way to make these strengths, you know what I mean, and elevate them together, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, grow together, grow as grow as a team, you know, and try yeah. to hopefully be able to do that with some other artists as well that are, you know, what I mean, around us, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as far as right now, uh, what do you think, in your opinion, um, is the next step? What's, what's going to take you guys to the next level? Videos. Videos, Videos and shows. Videos and shows. Uh, we just recently had a show at Radon Lounge. Shout out Radon Lounge. Yeah, here, in town, here, here in town. Um, and they have never really had like like a crowd like that. Like they weren't really like expecting people to be standing and like hype and you know what I mean like it's kind of the sick. time. Yeah. You know, and at the start there was you know a lot of people that were just still sitting and you know mm -hmm. by midway through our set you know we changed the whole energy you know got everybody everybody going so I think it's just performing in different areas like yeah. traveling traveling and performing and just getting more videos out there too. Yeah. You know people feed off those visuals. You know, that's Amen. why that's why people like, you know, this type of shit, like interviews and like seeing like what artists are up yeah, to. What are we up you know to? What yeah. Like what what are these guys up to? Oh, this you know, people like you know, it's like, Oh, this dude I wanna see this dude's always catching these people, you know, I'm trying to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's the same thing. I think visuals are just so key, so key right now, especially with our Spotify still growing. Yep. For sure. Uh, what does your Spotify look like right now? Uh, what are we at? Like ten, eleven k. Yeah, ten, eleven k monthly listeners. This shit's been fluctuating or whatever, but but yeah, bro. I yeah, would say back right and forth there. from like there to like seventeen thousand. Yeah. We've been like back and forth from there. Um, Trying to get some. There's a couple singles about to break twenty k. Hopefully it'll break. Yeah, this yeah. Month, we got so. technique. Our song technique uh, featuring Danny J. That is that is almost at twenty k. Uh, yeah. It's been out for a couple months, so you know, I mean, still you know, gradually still moving. Yeah. So. Yep, still still up and you know getting hundreds of plays a day, so it's yeah, you know it's still totally. so you know it's in people's playlists. And fortunately for Spotify, that's another big thing. People need to learn how to use Spotify. We can see who's listening and track it and try to yeah. try to market ourselves. A lot of towards. motherfuckers capping in Springfield, yeah. like, oh, I've been listening to your. The numbers no, don't show, right. man. We can I, see city to city. So. I know, I know if you're listening to Springfield. Bro. <laughs> just saying, know, man. I'm just I saying know. for anybody. Why watching. am I? Why am I having a hundred people say that? But why don't? <laughs> you know what I mean? We I don't still even got have like 40. Only have a hundred. Only have like sixty listeners in Springfield. No, yeah. fuck y'all, cap. No. <laughs> yeah, I still love my city though. I still Amen. love people here. You know, they mean well. I, I, they mean well when they come up to me. I think. And yeah, and all they do. You know. So. So as far as uh, visuals and that being an important step to getting to the next level, how do you guys? How are you guys going to stay creative in your visuals? 
Oh, that's so, yeah. I would say collabing with, mo like, making sure that we don't just stick with one videographer, because every videographer's got a different style, you know what I mean? Right. I actually love, you know, our first video was with Visual Paradise, and that man's, I mean, he's got... I don't want to say every video is the same because I'd be I'd, pfft, that's not no, true. No, but sure. he's got a, he's got a style of shooting for sure. For sure. Where yeah. When our next video comes definitely. out with Elijah Settles, you're gonna see the difference in in footage. You know, thirty times different. Yeah. yeah, and that doesn't change times, the work yeah. ethic or nothing, bro. It's just a matter of style and you know how they shoot and how they edit. So I would say you know, keeping it just keeping our creative, you know, our zone going and making sure that the music is always different and then. For sure, yeah, yeah, not having like super similar sounds, I guess, with each video. I want like the video to match the song. Yeah, you, you know what I mean, like like the type of vibe that the video you know gets edited with, you know, and like because mm -hmm. I do want to dabble into like all that drawing shit. Like I, you know, yeah, I mean, wrong cool. place. We're doing wrong places. That's our new single that's gonna be coming out in a couple months. Uh, uh, we're doing that with uh, Elijah Settles, but yep. uh, but it's gonna be just a it's gonna be a little different vibe than visuals, you know. Visual Paradise. That was a that was that was a more turn up, you know, yeah. type of song. But this is gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What's the word on the street on Papa Luke and Kid Vicky? Man, I wish I knew more. Uh, um, you know, I know. I you know what? To be honest, uh, I mean, we got the hottest music right now for sure. We got the, it's we, true, bro. We got the hottest music. I mean, Humbly, along, of alongside DGD. I mean. Everybody around here is out here supporting us. You know, I got a lot of friends in Chicago, you know, and, yeah. and they're bumping us religiously. I mean, that's that's yeah. one of our top cities, too, you know, so it's just, mm -hmm. like, nice. It's a comforting thing, you know, having people from up there, you know. Yeah. It's amazing. So it's just, it's just, the word basically is, is, it's They've been working. Un, un, undeniable. We are undeniable. Our sound is undeniable. Yeah. Like, we, we are going to change... We got music for everybody. We got music for people of you trying to go to sleep. We got people. We got music for you in the club. We got music for you if you're doing a thing with your girl. We got everything, bro. We got all types of music. And yep. I think that's what's separated. People look at us so funny when it's like, you know, they hear a song where we're rapping and then they hear us singing and they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's not the same person. That's not, yeah, yeah. There, there's no way that's the same person. They just, it's the diversity and it's just undeniable, bro. Yeah. Humbly, of course, yeah. but you know. What could you say about Io? <laughs> that ugly boy. boy so, I love you him, know bro. when he's about to walk in a room. You, you know that. <laughs> when you hear that <laughs> this man, we have so much love for this man, bro. Yeah, we have bro. so much love for this man. So, like, I mean, he's basically giving us a spot, you know, all the time. Like, basically, you know, I, I know there's a lot of, you know, other artists that come here. I just feel like he's treated us very, very fairly. And yeah. so far, with other artists as well, he's he's treating them fairly. So Yeah, and he's, he's a... What were you going to say? Uh, no, go ahead, bro. I was going to say, he's, he's just a good balance of being uh, professional. Bu yeah, professional and yeah. casual. You know, they say keep it business casual. And like yeah. he said, when it's time to get real, he'll get real. And when, you know, when we're just vibing and making music or whatever, he'll come right in there and be like, let me hear what you're making under my roof, man. Like, he's he's cool as hell, bro. He's such a such a bright, like, personality. and Genuine. Yeah, yeah he makes me want to yeah. keep making music here. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's, he's done a lot for us so far. And he, he believes in us. So, you know, shout mm -hmm. out. Shout out Io. Shout out High Soul Music, bro. Big shout out, bro. So, what do they say about Kid Ziggy's hairdo? Oh, bro, I've been called Frylock. Like, I got a bunch of French fries coming out of my head. Uh, yeah, bro. Pineapple head. Yeah, once I tie them up, I look like a pineapple got, or a fucking palm tree or something. Bro, I've gotten all kinds of stuff. You look like you got candy cigarettes hanging from your head. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, you know, at first, I was like, man. I mean, when you start dreadlocks, especially with a person like with my kind of hair texture or whatever, it's they're not going to look the best right off the bat. So I definitely get some weird looks like when I'm just trying to, I just need to get some groceries, man. I'm just, I just need to get groceries. <laughs> like I'm just walking around and people are looking at me like they've never seen this. Like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm some kind of creature. But some type of alien. That's a good thing though. Yeah, I don't care. I've, I've definitely adapted to it. But yeah, I, I get some looks and then every once in a while you'll find a lady that goes crazy for it. But most ladies are like, ah. I don't know. Yeah, bro. Hey, I fuck with it. So you know what? <laughs> exactly, bro. Fuck right. these bitches. <laughs> okay. Um, what can you say about the music industry right now? Like, what are your, what are your takes on it? You know, people signing deals, people quote unquote selling their soul. What do you? Yeah, it's all. I think it's a lot of cap. Scary. A lot Look, of cap. Like that shit's scary, bro. It's That's true. Scary. I sold my soul to God. You know what I'm saying? I no, I ain't. I don't. I ain't. I ain't fucking with none of that. Selling your soul type shit. No, I know? got mine in a bottle, bro. Yeah, so, <laughs> but but low key, I 
do believe in some of that stuff. I, I just, I don't, I try to not dabble into it too much. But like right. signing deals wise, like that's just scary. I think yeah. you know, like signing like a big deal because you don't know what you're really getting into. And I feel like a lot of these industry, like major industries, they're finding these people that really aren't popping, but they, you know, have their own little buzz. You know, mm-hmm. kind of like us. Like we're not like you know. We're about to be, but, you know what I'm saying, it's just not, you know, we're not at the level we want to be at, of course. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like they find people like that, you know, people that, you know, may not have a whole lot of money or things like that. You know, kids in poverty and stuff like that. And they, you know, they they snap on them, they give them these these deals and, you know, they give them these nice cars, this nice stuff, you know. And they might sell, they might, like, sign a deal for, like, what, like, you know, a couple million for, like, three years or something, you know what I'm saying? But then you ain't got, you can't. No say, bro. Like they're they're gonna gonna do everything for you. They're gonna hand everything to you, and you might Uzi, bro. Yeah, I mean, like Lozan, bro. I guess apparently it's scary to watch Lozan, bro. Like Lozan literally is like he's like I want out of my record label. I can't get out. This car's not mine. This Uh, like all this shit. I'm owned. I'm a fucking slave. I'm a slave to my management. I'm a slave to everybody. I don't get control of my license. I don't get control of my bank account. I don't get control of shit. I can't even drive that fucking car. They put it in the basement so I couldn't take it. I'll tell you right now, I will not sign a 360. No. I will not sign a 360 deal. I'd rather go independent and not make as much money. Yeah, bro. Because the music's still good. For the viewers on Verbatim that don't know what a 360 deal, what, what is what is that? Oh, 360? Yeah, so basically when you sign that deal, that is no in and outs. So when you're into that deal, for however long it is, there is no ins and outs. You cannot you cannot get out of that deal. Yeah. And you don't get to decide when your music drops. You know what I'm saying? If they're nice, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, if your 360's maybe. nice, maybe. But like yeah. but like most of the time, nah. Most of, like that's why Lil Xan went so wild. Because yeah, like, he, he couldn't throwing, do shit. He couldn't drop shit. He was throwing tantrums like he destroyed his car and he was like trying to go live. Not even his the... car. You see what that looks like? I just did this to my car. Scratched it, keyed it up. I just bought it. I just bought this fucking car. It's keyed all the way. <laughs> the fucking door. Wanna know why I'm doing that? Because of mental fucking illness. Yeah, he, he couldn't even go on Instagram Live. His management was, like, smacking the phone out of his hand and beating him up. Bruh, he, he doesn't have no say. So. I'm not about to be a little bitch boy. That's for sure. Mm. Not, not to say Zane's a bitch, but he signed himself up for something he didn't even know he was No, yeah, it's not his fault. Fuck no. Yeah, it ain't his fault. So why do you think most people have a problem with not being managed in that way where the whole company is doing it for you? Right. You know, I feel like I feel like maybe he already did, you know what I mean? Like people like that, they already tried to do that, you know what I mean? And they've realized that over and over they keep getting probably rejected. I'm assuming, you know, this is just an assumption. But like but like I'm sure they probably went to their management and like been like, Yo, why can't I drop my music? Or like what is a, what's the problem here? Is it is it my music? What you know what I mean? At least figure something out. Mm-hmm. But like like when it comes to three sixty, it's just no way. There's just yeah. no way for me because it's too scary because you don't know what's going to happen. So I think when you get somebody like that, like Zan or, you know, uh, what's his ass? Is Uzi. 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 You know, they, 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 th- those are people that are bank. They're, they're out here, bro. They're out here doing the, doing like big numbers too. Yeah. And it's just so crazy to me that they're being held like that. Yeah. It sucks, bro. I think there's good management out there, you know, but yeah. And, and, and going off that bro. Like, I don't know if Drake was ever into 360 or not, but I remember when he put out that, if you're reading this, it's too late tape or whatever. He put that tape out because he had to put out one more album to get off his contract. Like, under under yeah. his contract, he had to have a certain number of albums. And so, oh, yeah, for, that album, right. for that album, it was all throwaway tracks. It was yeah. tracks that never made the cuts for the other albums, and he just smacked it together, said, yeah, this is the project, get me out of the deal. Just get me out. And it was still a fire-ass project because yeah, he, yeah. he just makes good music, but like, yeah, in that case, bro, his management was loose enough to where he could get away with it. But Yeah, I'm low-key surprised, you know, Lil Wayne and all that, you know, whatever happened with him and Birdman or whatever. But, you know, I just I just think uh, you kind of got to be picky with who you're going to sign with. Like, you have to feel like a certain energy, I feel like. I feel like you can't just go, because no matter what, if I was offered like $3 million on a 360 deal, I'd be freaking the fuck out. I'd be like... You'd at least think about I it. I would have to, yeah. I mean, I would definitely be thinking about it. But, like, I would literally have to go back to my roots, call myself down, and be like, yo, we got to talk about this being a 360. You know, mm-hmm. you know we got to find a way to, if I can dip, I can dip. Not just, like, I'm trapped here. 
under you yes. and going to these places that you are telling me to go to that I don't get to decide where I'm going. Like you're right. basically you're basically giving your life away for you know not just it, for for, the, for how much time like five years of your life or something yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're being controlled on one end, but on the other end, to everybody else, you're popular. You're a yeah. star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perception. See, yeah, that's why I say I think it's. Seeing a, is the the back end of it of what's really going on. Yeah, yeah, bro, that's that's for real. That's why like, I think there's a yeah. lot of cap. There's just so much cap going on. Like, <laughs> the, if there were more behind the scenes, which I'm so not afraid. Like, I'll let you know what's up. Like, I used to watch those Wiz Khalifa day to days just to see what the hell those dudes were doing. But they were just smoking. But but they were just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Kicking it had their own wave, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like they, they can do what they want. They Taylor Gang is Wiz's, and that's only Wiz. Like, yeah, right. So he can do what he, I don't know if the, he, he has 360s where people are under him and he gets to say, but... And also, so to say, I mean, in a way, you could look at it like an internship. Like, all right, I'll give two, three years of my life away because then after that contract's up, now I got a fan base. Now I can do what I need to do with it. Right. You know? So, I mean, you can take it as you wish. Me, personally, I don't want anyone telling me what to do. Yeah, you know, know. Not, not without me at least having to say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, like, I always put it, like, no offense, like, the management, they're not the ones, like, making my music. Like, yeah. Like, nobody's, they ain't touching my music. Like, yeah. I if mean, they want to sign you. They, they might have, like, you know, a better engineer that can, like, make it sound just there at the top co- top quality, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, like, if you had nothing to do with my music or, like, how I sang it or rapped it and, like, how I flowed it, like, so. Yeah, you're definitely not going to write it for me. So, so yeah, hell no. But, like, and you're also, you're also, you're also not going to, you, you're not, you're not going to tell me, like, which one is the most popping. Like, I'm smart enough to, like, like, I'll play my music around, like, people, like, you know, if they slide in or, or if they do this or whatever, and I get, like, vibes off of, like, multiple people, and, like, I really start kind of building up, like, okay, so this one's gotten the most, you know what I mean, like, good feedback, so yeah. let's drop that one, you know what I mean? You know, it's just little previews, I don't even have to play the whole song, you know what I mean? We don't answer but to like, nobody. Yeah, but it's, like, but it's, like, give the people what they want, though, you know? Sometimes uh, these big record labels, I feel like they, they think they know, like, but they don't really, they don't really know. They don't know for Shit's sure. It's gonna hit or sink, bro. Or yeah. Hit or miss. Hit or miss, bro. I'm not trying to miss very much. Like I'm, I'm trying to go up, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so what song that, sh- that out of your selection of songs that you guys have put out is the, um, is a hit? I'd say either Technique, or Ricky Bobby, bro. And Ricky Bobby was off our first project. The whole project just got taken off of all platforms. So like, we're yeah, trying to figure TuneCore, out. Yeah, TuneCore is fucking stupid. They they mm-hmm. they stop. We stopped fucking with TuneCore. TuneCore takes your shit off after a year. You have to like do a re-sign for it or whatever. Okay, yeah. So what happened? What happened with that? Basically, when we put out the album, you have to either like what like the way that TuneCore works for all the independent artists that are trying to find yeah. ways to put out music. Right. Go DistroKid. Don't go to fucking TuneCore because you're going to have to pay extra money to keep your music going. Like you, They'll yeah. post it for like a yeah. year, and then there's going to be a fee. It's like, do you want to keep your music on TuneCore on all platforms? Right. If you don't pay the fee, we're taking it down. Yeah. So, I mean, we had a, we had something that was just about to hit 20K, basically 20K. And yeah. now the stats and everything, all of it's pretty much gone. Yeah, <laughs> so we're going to have to either re-upload it or like contact TuneCore and be like, bruh. Which I'm fine with. I mean, we had multiple... Uh, Hundreds of people were listening to that joint every day. So yeah. So, like, so, I mean, we're going to put it back up, but... Yeah. But we're probably going to re-put it up to DistroKid. I'd say anybody that's independent, go to DistroKid. Hey, Amen. Drop, drop your music there, bro. You don't have anything, and you get all rights to your music, bro. So, you know, but that was, you know, that album, what, now? Over a year ago? That, that album we dropped? So it's been almost... We're rounding on two years now when we first yeah. dropped... Uh, Disoriented. So yeah, that, like, sh- that shit was yeah. almost to 100k. I think it was at like it was 75, 75, 80, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, it was so, good up there. Yeah, that that one did well. It's just like, yeah, it's just that's just how TuneCore works, bro. It's fucking stupid. It's unfortunate. So stupid, bro. So stupid. Okay. Mm. Um, looking back when you first started your music and looking at it now, there's a big improvement. I think we both can agree on that. As far as listening to your music now, what do you think can be improved on? Oh, man, it's so hard because I feel like you can never stop, you know? Yeah, you're always growing, but man, yeah. even when I hear, like, my writing, like, to, eventually, man, especially with the whole Nipsey thing going down, like, when I, you know, Nipsey's name's going to be remembered because of the shit he was saying. Like, he was speaking, like, you know, For not sure. only politics, but he was trying to promote you to be, like, an independent, go make something, go sell it, like, do something, you know? And, and 
sometimes with like you know i mean i like Lil pump he's a little personality you know what i'm saying he's fun to watch but like if he died today his, he would just be known for making party music you know and and life is way more than just a party so like yeah. you know at the end of the day i would say my lyrics probably as i grow as a man i'm going to be trying to you know document how i am growing and how you should be maybe for growing sure. I, I completely agree. I just like, you know, like I want to I want to hit all dynamics of of music. Like I, I don't want to stop like improving like one certain thing. Like I want to I want to perfect the craft of music, you know. Yeah. Like and just in and, and and find a way find a way to like to like be the best at each, you know, kind of category that I can be, you know. Mm -hmm. And just each each genre. It's just there's so much there's so much to still improve on. I feel like every day I've been growing. You know, every day I've been growing into the artist that I'm supposed to be and the artist that we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it's it's just experimenting with your voice, experimenting, you know, with your sounds and, and, and the things you write. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as far as right now, where can we find your music? Everywhere. Everywhere. You can Google us. Um, yeah, that was that was pretty new. That just happened. You can find us on Google. Um, yeah. But well, uh, since the first album got taken down, you might have a problem with like finding us on. I mean, if you YouTube us, oh, no, our video is gonna so. pop up because we we got a video with like 150k. So I mean, that you'll find that if you YouTube Papa Luke or Kid Ziggy. But, yeah, either one. It'll be the first thing that pops up. Yeah, but from if you Papa Google Luke us, Kid Ziggy, either, yeah, if you yeah. Google us, man, it'll bring up like Spotify links and Deezer and iTunes and that kind of shit. But yeah. like. Mainly all platforms, SoundCloud too, you know, we're everywhere. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. All platforms, um, it just depends on what you have on your phone. You know, if you're an yeah. Android user, go ahead and go to Amazon or go to Google Play. Yeah. Um, or, you know, or even Tidal, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but if you're an iPhone user, Apple Music, so it's it's friendly for any phone, any type of subject. And, you know, it's on the free stream too, so. If yeah, and we thought about that a lot before we released, man. We are like, we want everyone to, we even want to be able to be like, yo, Siri, play this. Like, we want everything, make it as easy as possible. Right, to find yeah, this, you yeah. Know what I'm saying? So, Siri, you can say, hey, Siri, play Papa Luke. And it's just going to start, off. it's just going to start playing, like, some of our music, so. Mm -hmm. to, or even... Kid dig, you know, start playing our music. So right it's just on. like both sides. You feel um, me? He said, "We're about to freestyle." No oh, shit. Oh, it's one of those. It's one of those. One of dim ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I got you, buddy. No. Uh, I, acapella. Yeah, so are we going acapella? Yeah. Shit, fuck it. I mean, I got that brand new scope with an AR tenant. Let off rounds of the kid really with it. Little big town in a place we live in. Everybody gotta get a scoop, it's a given. My name now gets worse each minute. I had time to get good riddance. Fuck y'all now, I'm up, no switching. Thanks for the time, but no more kidding. Pay my own way to get risen. I go hard from start to finish. Best up next, fuck that, I'm winning. I'm mm. winning, I'm winning. There's just some truth I'm in that, bro. So much. Fuck that, I'm winning. Man. City's my territory. Okay. Um, you got? I tell him I'm up next. Been a minute. I've been running, making my comeback, but making my lungs black. Every individual saying, you should have sung that, but I be spitting too ridiculous. Are you dumb, Jack? <laughs> I'm finding it harder to try to listen up. I'm praying I'm never gonna find my wrists in cuffs. I'm staying where I'm at because I give no fucks. I hope another person try to test my luck. I've been working, trying to find my purpose. I've been hurting, but I scratched the surface. I've been burning like a fucking furnace. You've been preaching like it was a sermon, but you never practiced your service. Why the hell you acting so nervous? Cause your fucking tactic ain't working. You've been such an actress, close curtains. I appreciate the people that see my potential. Yeah. You the opposite of everything blocking my mental. Yeah, yeah. Got me contemplating never being sentimental. Yeah. Roll another blunt, play another instrumental, Shit. spit another riddle in the middle of the riddling rush. They ask why we ain't giving a fuck. I ain't got the riddling, I keep the addy though. Messed up, can't even open the taxi though. <laughs> why you gotta body me like that? <laughs> oh, come on now. You, you should have sung that, but I be spitting too ridiculous. That's you dumb, dumb Jack. Jack. That's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, Yo, what's up? It's Papa Luke. And I'm Kid Ziggy. And, and you're, you're watching, watching verbatim. verbatim. That's what's up. Going in the wind as I pat the other trees